Why do we age and die? Is there an evolutionary purpose to aging and therefore dying? Would it make sense to say that there is an intentional part of evolution that makes older members of a species weaker and more frail over time so that they would die off and more resources are spent on the younger members of a species? Is this the case? This logic follows a theory of aging and therefore death called the theory of programmed death. This theory is actually not accepted as a general theory of aging and therefore death by evolutionary biologists at this point in time. If you look at the way humans live today, especially in developed countries, most of us do in fact die to aging related problems. The thing is, this is a unique situation that only applies to humans. Life has been here for billions of years. We've been enjoying this unique situation for around 100 years or so. The problem is animals living in the wild are not really going to live long enough for evolution to set any kind of age limit. As an example, 9 out of 10 mice living in the wild will die before the age of 10 months, while the same species of mice being raised by humans living in captivity will have an average lifespan of 24 months. Chimpanzees. The median lifespan of chimpanzees that are in captivity being raised by humans is 23 for male chimpanzees and 30 for female chimpanzees, with some female chimpanzees being able to live all the way up to the age of 50 years. The median lifespan of chimpanzees living in the wild is 8 years, with almost none of them being able to reach the age of 50 years. Birds on average live 5 to 10 times longer than mammals of the same size. How is this possible? There is evidence that birds have actually evolved mechanisms to protect themselves against the effects of aging. If we were birds, imagine that by the time we reach the age of 50 or 60, something kicks in in our body that makes us less susceptible to heart attacks. The problem is, very few animals living in the wild will live long enough for evolution to really make any kind of age limit possible, but an age limit still exists. Why do we age? Now, while the theory of programmed death is not accepted as a general theory for why we age and therefore die by evolutionary biologists, it did pave way to some better understanding for why we age and therefore die and some of the mechanisms that causes us to age. One of the most important realizations is that cells do not divide forever. There are segments at the end of chromosomes. Every time a cell divides, these segments become depleted more and more over time. Eventually, these segments become completely depleted, and at that point, the cell stops replicating. This is the point where a cell has reached the Hayflick limit. Now, this only applies on the cellular level, not the entire organism as a whole. It definitely contributes to the process of aging, but it is not the only factor. Not only that, there are organisms whose certain cells that are part of their bodies can divide much, much more than the 40 or 60 cycles that human cells tend to go through. For something that explains the entire process of aging, we need a much more comprehensive general theory for aging. One possible theory is called the mutation accumulation theory. What is this theory about? I am glad that you asked. Natural selection is a fundamental aspect of evolution that allows life and organisms to adapt to the challenges that they are facing in their environments. This process itself, natural selection, might be aging itself. Its strength might be declining with age. How so? To explain this, I will need an example that involves something morbid. Death, because unfortunately death is required in order for natural selection to work. Let's imagine that we have a certain population of humans. Let's say it's this population that you see right now in front of you. Let's also assume that they are all children and they have not reached adulthood just yet. Now let's also assume that 50% of this population are afflicted by a deadly gene that will make it so that they have an 80% chance of dying from a heart attack before they become adults. Not only that, those who survive with this deadly gene to adulthood, we are going to assume that if they were to partner up with someone that does not carry this deadly gene, all children born by both parents are going to be carrying this deadly gene. This is the very deadly gene and could in fact wipe out this population. Natural selection, however, will prevent this from happening and will make it so that within a few generations, the gene will be kicked out of the gene pool.
those who are unfortunate and carry this deadly gene are very likely to die off before they can have children of their own. As a result, the second generation of this population is going to have way less children that have this deadly gene when compared to the first generation. And this will become less and less over time. In the simulation that I've ran of this gene affecting this population, it has exited the gene pool by the sixth generation. It could continue for much longer than that, but it becomes very, very unlikely for it to continue existing in the gene pool beyond the tenth generation. As you can see from this example, the strength of natural selection is incredibly high. It punched out this deadly gene very quickly. But imagine the same example except the deadly gene does not affect children and only affects those who are 80 years or older, making them, say, 80% likely to have a heart attack within the next 10 years. In this particular case, the deadly gene could stay as part of the gene pool for a really, really long time. Why? Because someone who is 80 years or older would have already reproduced, passed on the genes that he or she could have passed, and then lived on, became 80 years old, and then had a heart attack. The mutation accumulation theory basically says is that we tend to have a lot of these late acting deadly genes that causes us to age over time due to the fact that natural selection itself becomes weaker with age. Another possible theory is called the antagonistic protropy theory. What is this theory about? It is possible that genes that cause us to age and have problems due to being old are in fact genes that are actively kept by natural selection as part of the gene pool because those genes are good to us early on in our life. A possible example would be the cell division limit that I mentioned earlier, a primary mechanism for why we age as some bodily functions stop really being bodily functions as the cells required to make this bodily function be a function are not really reproducing as much as they used to. Why would natural selection make it so that our cells don't really divide forever? It would seem like a good idea that our cells should in fact divide forever, right? Sure, if you want a lot of cancer. Cancer is a problem where cells grow uncontrollably with almost no limit, forming tumors which shut down the bodily functions of an organism. Cancer is such a problem that it is threatening entire species with extinction and has probably caused a lot of species to become extinct in the past. This may have created enough evolutionary pressure for the cell division limit to exist, the Hayflick limit. The segments at the end of chromosomes in cancerous cells become renewed over time, allowing cancerous cells to reproduce much, much more than regular healthy cells. Without a cell division limit in place, the risk of cancer goes up much higher. And this is a problem, especially for younger members of a species who are trying to become adults, survive, have children of their own, and then those children would then go on and reproduce on their own as well. Or we could have a cell division limit in place not have that much cancer, but we have to live with the fact that eventually our bodies would be damaged by the cell division limit. There's another theory called the disposable soma theory. In this theory, an organism seems to age due to the way it maintains its body. As an organism ages, it is possible that the process of maintenance and repair of the body of this organism becomes more and more costly over time. Eventually, the processes of maintenance themselves will require maintenance. And after this point, a case of exponential collapse happens across the entirety of this organism due to a weak link that exists in the body of the organism. Maybe it is its heart or its liver or something else that will cause the organism to, well, die. Now, there are observations that support all of those theories, but biologists need a bit more, actually much, much more observations in order to pick one of those theories and say this is a general theory for why we age and therefore die. It is possible that there is a combination of those theories working together that makes us age and therefore die. The problem is there are some problems that will need to be resolved in all of those theories. One problem, for example, is that some organisms seem to be able to survive and reproduce better as they age. Female turtles, for example, as they age, they become larger, less likely to be eaten by a predator, and brings more babies to the world. However, cases like these are the exception, not the rule. But here is a problem. There is actually a bigger boss at work here than natural selection and evolution. This boss is called physics. 
it might itself be the reason for why we age and eventually die. Through what process? Entropy. The universe is becoming in an increasing state of disorder over time, and biological organisms are no exception. The problem specifically for biological organisms is that as disorder increases in the body of an organism, the amount of useful work an organism can get from the molecules that make up its body becomes less and less over time. Fortunately, biological organisms do have a way of handling this increase in disorder. In this example, you can see my hand, an outside energy source, rearranging these MMs from a disordered state back into an ordered state of things. Now, overall, you're not really reducing the amount of disorder, you're actually increasing the amount of disorder because remember, my hand is interacting with these MMs. So, while these MMs are going to become less disordered, the environment that it is interacting with is going to have an increase in disorder. This process also happens within our bodies. It's not as simple as rearranging a bunch of M&Ms, but you get the picture. The problem is though, what is being observed is that once we start becoming older and older, the amount of energy that is being spent on reducing this disorder seems to become less and less over time. And as a result, what happens? The organism decays, ages, and eventually dies. What do you think? Why do we age? Why do we die? Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.